Hey everyone, welcome back to Behind the Scenes with the Uton Dubizo. Today, we've got a very interesting topic to talk about, advertising. And for that, we have our guest today, the Director of Advertising, Anthony Blackford. Anthony, thanks a lot for joining us today. And uh, we understand how busy your schedule it is, so we're all excited to have you here. How do you feel? Yeah, great. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invite. Of course, as the Director of Advertising, um, the first thing that I need to ask is, in, in Beirut and Dubizo, um, how do we go about advertising? So, Dubizo and Beirut, it's all about connecting buyers and sellers. And it's really no different for the advertising team. Our job is to work with as many advertisers as possible, um, where we're pushing their uh, products or services that enhance our user journey. So, if you're looking for a car, the likelihood is that you may need finance, you certainly need insurance, you could be interested in what new car sale prices are in the market. Similarly, if you're looking for a property for sale, you'll need a mortgage. So we try to work with advertisers who can enhance our user experience by, their, by advertising their products and services. Right, and bring the wholesome experience to the user. Correct, yes. Oh, that's great. Um, and talking about the team uh, that you're leading, is there a particular strategy in terms of how they, are, how they interact or how they're divided? So as a business, I think we really want to <clears throat> work with advertisers that, as I say, uh, improve our user experience. So we set up the sales team to, to facilitate that. So we, we split the sales team into uh, various industries. We have a cars team, property team, uh, finance and insurance team, telco team, and then retail and other. So the beauty of that is that the sales team are building up their industry knowledge um, going into the market and we really come across as thought leaders but then also we're we're laser focused on driving um, revenue but more adverts from from advertisers where uh, there's a natural affinity to, to what the user's doing on site. And uh, once the team goes to the specific person that wants to advertise, um, I believe we set up campaigns. So. Can you speak a bit more about that? So the sales team take the lead on the conversation with the client or the media agency. Um, they'll discuss budget, objective, KPIs that the client's tracking. Once all of that's agreed and confirmed, then it transitions over to our ad operations team. Um, we have a team of campaign managers who are responsible for the delivery of that campaign. So they'll set up the campaign, they'll apply the targeting, um, they'll optimize the campaigns once live. Um, very important. It's, it's very rare that you'll set up a campaign and in the first instance you get the best results. Right. Um, there's always different pockets that perform better than others. So it's our job to, to maximize performance by, by optimizing that. Um, we operate off a, a Google tech stack. So we use Google Ad Manager as our ad server. Um, very sophisticated tool. Um, I won't go into too much detail because it's, it, as I say, it's, it's, it's sophisticated, but essentially we map our category tree um, in the ad server so we can target ads uh, by vertical, so to the motor section, for instance, um, or we can restrict it to used cars or just BMW or BMW X5 even. Um, so that runs across the whole site, and then we can add additional layers to that. So whether it's price targeting, keyword targeting, location targeting, um, we've also built uh, over 200 audience segments, which is based on your uh, behaviors around the site. So for instance, if you've sold if you've sold a pram or you're looking for uh, children's furniture, we know you're a parent. If you're regularly buying and selling games for the Xbox, we know you're a gamer. Um, if you've just rented a place on the palm or you're selling your $100,000 uh, Mercedes, mm -hmm. the high likelihood is you're a high net worth individual. So we collect all of this data on our users that we then use uh, to target, but also optimize campaign. Uh, campaigns for performance. Right, it's, it's similar to how we, uh, how Amish was talking about this uh, in the last episode, where the experience is enhanced because you look at what you actually want to look at, um, and hence you might buy it. Yeah, so I think um, <clears throat> there's a couple of ways you can target ads. One is contextually, where you'll, you'll pick a specific uh, context to serve your ad, so a car in the car section or the other way is audience-based. Um, so marketeers have different approaches to, to what fits their business and, and how they target their audience. Thankfully for us, we've, we've got great contextual relevancy, right. um, but also we've got a huge amount of data to build out that audience targeting. That gives, them the, gives us the wholesome uh, approach as to what we do in advertising. Uh, can we talk a bit about Anthony? Yes. Uh, what, what has been your journey 
uh, throughout your career? So yeah, I've been in um, the classified slash advertising business for the best part of 12 years now. Mm -hmm. I started back at eBay Classifieds Group in London, working for uh, their UK business, Gumtree. Mm -hmm. uh, very mature business, commercially savvy. eBay Classifieds Group at the time were for sure the largest uh, classifieds group globally. Mm -hmm. um, then in 2016, I relocated to Dubai to join Dubizzle, uh, which was part of the OLX group. Mm -hmm. um, very aggressive business in terms of their growth. Uh, a lot of M&A, um, who then became the largest classified business in the world. So okay. I kind of went from the largest, uh, from a revenue perspective, to, to the largest, certainly from a user perspective. So now being at EMPG, um, it's interesting to see that growth of the classified uh, sort of industry over the last 12 years, where um, 12 years ago it started uh, the main goal was all about acquiring users and, and the volume of uh, your user base, connecting the buyers and sellers, but very much taking a back step in uh, transactions and allowing them to, to transact themselves. Whereas now, fast forward 12 years, we're, we very much want to complete that transaction for our users. So if you're selling your car, uh, we'll, we'll collect your car, we'll wash it, we'll take the photographs, we'll, we'll list it on site, uh, we'll do the test drives with, with the with the potential buyers and we'll even deliver the car after the, the buyers purchased it. Um, it's very different to what it was 12 years ago. So uh, I think EMPG are really on the, the front foot of what we're trying to do from a transactional standpoint in, in classifieds, certainly in Pakistan with um, Zameen Properties, but in, in the UAE as well, there's some uh, exciting projects coming up. Let's talk a bit about Anthony on the weekend. So what is it that you do? Uh, if you had asked me that question a year ago, it'd be very different. Um, my wife just gave birth to our, our first little boy, Harry, oh, three wow. months ago. Congrats. Yeah, so uh, exciting times, very tired, not a lot of sleep at the <laughs> minute, but uh, extremely enjoyable at the same time. Um, so a lot of family, uh, family activities at the weekend currently. Outside of that, I, I follow a lot of sports. I'm uh, unfortunately an Arsenal supporter. Oh. Uh, had a tough, tough few years, but we seem to be back on track. Uh, I, t I try to play golf, but uh, not as much as I'd like, unfortunately. But uh, I, I certainly follow the, the key events in the, in the golfing calendar. F1 is a new one for me. Uh, I followed it loosely over the years, um, but I think being here, having access to the, the race in Abu Dhabi, obviously at the end of the year, has sort of perked my interest there. Did you go there physically? Or I've been just... twice, yeah, I've been twice, thankfully. And did Netflix have anything to do with ignite this yeah so the deck uh, yeah I have, I have seen the documentary on netflix yeah. which um is yeah for sure anyone who hasn't seen that uh, i would go out and watch that it's a very good documentary but i think the new season kicks off very soon so i'm looking forward to that you're doing a lot of things over the weekend actually i, tr I try to yeah where i'm allowed uh three questions which just to get to know you better uh the first one which car do you drive i drive a jeep grand cherokee a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> would you like to get the Gladiator or not now? No, I'm. I wouldn't say I'm a car man. I want to get from A to B in in comfort. I don't need to sound loud getting there or yeah. get there quicker. Says the person who has a Grand Cherokee. Says the person who has a Grand <laughs> Cherokee. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, the second thing: What is your favorite morning drink? An English breakfast tea. Okay. Um, you could take me out of the UK, but uh, I still like my tea. Um, or a cafe latte. But with my cafe lattes, I have to have them extra hot. If you were to be a superhero, who would you be? Uh, let's go for the Hulk. I'm not sure if he's a superhero because he kind of destroys stuff, but I'd pick the Hulk. <laughs> Just for the sheer strength? Yeah, for the sheer strength. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, so <laughs> let's, let's come back into uh, investments. And um, so I'm curious about this one thing. And since you're very uh, digitally savvy, You've seen the digital space evolve over time. Um, what are your thoughts about the future of the digital space itself? Well, for sure, it's going more data driven. Mm -hmm. um, just the amount of data that's being collected nowadays, it's, it's alarmingly high. Uh, yeah, it's, it's huge. And I think there is that balance that needs to be kept on how, it, how it's used. I don't think it's right when it's intrusive mm -hmm. as such. At the same time, I think everyone would prefer to have relevant ads um, as opposed to irrelevant ads. Um, so yeah, I think more personalized, uh, hopefully not to a point where 
you're frightened by what you what you've been shown in in front of you. But I think uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of involvement coming now from the metaverse to cryptos to NFTs. I think the digital space itself is um, it's yes yeah, it's exciting, and I think it's uh, going to be an interesting space to watch over the coming years. And how long do you think it'll take for us to just wear a specs, walk into a place, and it just looks completely different? Well, a virtual space for that matter. Well, that, that's uh, the million dollar question that I can't answer, but I think it's already happening now where you can walk into shops and, and pick up items and walk out without ever interacting with a person. And there's AI intelligence that's recognized the item that you've picked up and it's automated um, uh, payment off your mobile phone. I think Amazon Go. Yeah, Amazon yeah. have it. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly an interesting space. Well, Anthony, uh, I've had a great time having you here, just asking you a couple of questions, and I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I did, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for joining us this time. We'll be back with much more interesting stories from behind the scenes. Take care.